Hey y'all, Quabila Jones here, host of the Q-Spot Podcast. Make sure to be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions. And please subscribe, like, follow, share, and hit the notification bell. With special guest Garrett Jones discussing the fundamentals from the field to real life. Hey y'all, Quabila Jones here, QB, host of the QSpot Podcast. You are tuned in to another edition of the QSpot Podcast video series. And as you can see, my very special guest is Mr. Garrett Jones. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How about you? I am wonderful, and I'm so excited to have this conversation with you, and thank you so much for giving me your time. Um, I stumbled upon you, I guess you say, I think it was either Twitter or Facebook, this been some years ago, and I've been kind of following your career, and you know, what you've been doing um, off the football field with, you know, young people in your communities, the different places that you live, but before we get too deep, I just want to let everybody know the topic. It's the fundamentals from the field to real life. And so you have taken or you are taking what you've learned on the field and throughout your history, uh, your career playing football, um, and you're applying it to real life. And you're, you are empowering young people to hopefully apply those same fundamentals to their lives to lead down a successful path, path whatever success looks like for them. Um, I also want to let people know that you're a former NFL player. Um, you play for the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Kansas City Chiefs, Houston Texans, and Atlanta Falcons. And your career spanned from February 2002 to September 2006. So that's a little bit about Garrett, but I'm going to let him take over and give you a little more of the juicy details. And then we'll get into his foundation and what he's doing now. So. Take it away, Mr. Gary. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, first of all, I appreciate you for having me on and letting me be on this space with you, space with you to, to talk about the different things that I have going on in my life uh, uh, in, in regards to business, in regards to mentoring, all those different things. Um, I'll just start off by saying, you know, football for me uh, was a great teacher because you learn mm-hmm. about everything in life, you know, during the game and at practice and and in the off season and all those different things, you learn how to deal with people. You learn how to deal with different cultures, different thought processes. Uh, so now with the world in the state that it's in today, I think football, you know, is really big. A lot of people should go through those things as far as with teamwork uh, and understanding that everybody's different. Everybody comes from a different background, but we all are working toward one common goal. And that goal should be, you know, making sure that everybody is in a better place than when they got here. Uh, and that's that's really what I live by. You know, uh, I have teammates all over the world, uh, all colors, all shapes, all sizes. So, uh, you know, I did play a number of years in the NFL and I also played a number of years in the CFL. Uh, so I did around 13 years and all. They don't really tell you about all the all the years of training and everything else that they may not give you a credit for. Uh, so they kind of shortchange you on your years and Wikipedia and Google and everything like that. But uh, but I, I've been blessed. And, and with that blessing, you know, for me, it's, it's all about giving back and just making sure that, you know, these generations that, that come after me understand exactly what they have their hands on and the responsibility that they have to, to leave this world in a better place when they leave here. So uh, and that's that's what I live by. That's that's what we have on the table. Um, you know, uh, you know, with everything I do, especially working with the youngsters, is, is, is making sure that they understand that they have a voice and understand that they have a choice when it comes down to certain things. And and, and they're here for a purpose. You know, a lot of people don't get into their purpose until they're a lot older. I try to teach the youngsters to, to really find themselves early uh, and allow themselves to grow in their purpose. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's pretty much what I'm about. You know, I'm, I'm I'm a real cool guy, man. I'm down to earth, been around the block a few times. So I'm just trying to pass <laughs> on this knowledge. All right. Let's talk about, you know, not everyone has the same story, but we hear similar stories, especially with within the black community right. that. Sports often, I hate to say it like this, save your life or it helps you to redirect your life. Um, the sports is not for everybody. So we put that out there. However, for some people, sports is just a an avenue <laughs> to, lead to another, lead you to another path, lead you to another direction, another plane. Um, so talk about you know what your life was like, what sports, football in particular, you know, mm-hmm. did for you because there's different trainings 
different aspects that go into training for football, basketball, soccer, blah, 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 you know, but exactly. what was football for you? <laughs> well, for me, football was never really my first love. Okay. Uh, I was, I was an art guy. I was a oh. band geek. I was that, you know, I was into creating different things. Uh, and my brothers, you know, my older brothers were, were the most phenomenal athletes I had ever seen in my life. Um, and they were the ones that were supposed to be in the NFL and NBA and Major League Baseball and so on and so forth. But, you know, mm-hmm. they chose other routes, which, you know, I get, you know, as you're young, you know, you don't really know what you want to do at that age. And, and you know, they made made their decisions. But, um, you know, for me, I was always a lot larger than everybody else. Um, and uh, I just didn't see myself in class being the biggest guy in there, not really doing anything. So I decided to go ahead and, uh, and give it a try because I didn't really get into football until later on in high school um, for myself and really, you know, saying, OK, I can do this. But once I got a chance to get out there, uh, a lot of coaches came to me and said, you know, I don't know how serious you are about this game, but, you know, you could very well, you know, go to the NFL with it. You know, and at that point, I really wasn't thinking about it. But once I began to get into it and begin to, 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 to have all these coaches started coming to me, uh, I, I figured out that it was a tool you know, a tool for me to use to to, to have school uh, paid for uh, that I was going to be able to go out here and, and that be my currency in order to get school paid for. Um, and then, you know, if I played my cards right and did what I needed to do, I have the opportunity, you know, and that's exactly what happened. So uh, football has been instrumental for me. You know, a lot of times in communities that we come from, we're not really exposed to anything other than sports, uh, being an entertainer or, 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 or really – trying to figure out how to use our athleticism to, to get out the hood. Um, and, and those are some of the things that I looked at coming, you know, where I came from. And, and, and now that's a part of what we're, we're teaching, you know, giving more options uh, when it comes down to it. Cause I mean, statistically less than 1% of all athletes make it to the NFL, but a hundred percent are going to have bills, babies and problems. So uh, we try to focus on that and get that rocking and rolling. And then if that happens and you go to the NFL, it's not the end all. It's just a, a platform to do bigger and better things. So, okay, awesome. And so, as you moved along, and I can imagine, I'm not sure if you can clue me in. Mm-hmm. Football from high school to college to the NFL, just mm-hmm. whole different level. <laughs> different right. level. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. And you're dealing with different people, different mindsets, mm-hmm. different forms of discipline. Um, dedication, determination, train like all of that. So, was there ever a point where you decided where you felt like I don't want to do this anymore? Like, oh, yeah, all the time, <laughs> <laughs> all the time. I mean, I think that's the thing, it tests you, uh, in, in every aspect of your life, your faith, your, 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 your consistency, uh, all of those things. And, and it teaches you so much because you have to learn patience not only with yourself, but with other people, pe- other people, you know, um, it teaches you how to manage your aggression. Um, and, and it's a risk of tool, you know, um, there are different levels. Uh, and, and my son right now is, is figuring that out because he's going to the ninth grade and we're out here in Texas and, and in Houston, you know, football is king. So he's learning that now with his off season training. Uh, he's always been good at things and always been a step ahead of everybody. But now he's seeing that he has to put in the work. And that's exactly, you know, what what you learn. Uh, you learn how to be disciplined enough to put it into work, you know, go to practice, go to your training table, then go to your uh, study hall and, you know, and then try to have a, a social life a- after that. You know, it's uh, it's probably one of the hardest things that I've ever done, making a transition from high school to college, um, because that's your your day. And then you got to be a student, too, as well. So when people say, you know, free education, nah, not at all. It's not free. Uh, because my time is valuable and you spend more time uh, um, doing all these other things in school uh, than anything else. And then you go out and you you make the universities uh, millions of bucks. Right. So it's, it's one of those deals where when you're done, you say, damn, OK, we're here. You know, this is the deal uh, and this is my profession now. So I no longer have school and classes and all the different things that you go through in college. But uh, I would have to say college probably was one of the most trying you know, uh, scenarios when it comes down to learning how to be an adult uh, that I've gone through and athletes go through it, you know, every year annually. So it's, it's a part of the deal. Wow. And I promise you, I'm going to get to 
you know, applying all this to young people, but I wanted to get some of the backstory and some of the, you know, built up. And so another question I want to ask in there, you know, you talked about in college, how it's a whole different playing field. And it's, right. it's almost like it's preparing you for the possibility of the NFL. But then, right. like you said, there's a very high percentage of people who don't go. And there's yes, a high yeah. percentage of people who don't even go on to the professional level, which is like arena bowl and, you know, playing overseas and things like that. And right. so you spend all this time and energy into something that may stop at graduation, you know. Mm -hmm. What does that do to you like, internally? Like, no, it's uh, it, it's a humbling experience uh, for a lot of athletes, you know, and even for myself. Uh, leaving school the way I did, you know, I, I left after my junior year, um, and I still had, I had, yeah, I had another year to go. Um, you know, I was a guy that was always understanding of my wealth, uh, not my wealth, but my worth. I'm sorry. Um, and, and when you have all those different aspects of life going on and you're trying to figure things out and then you have the school situation and, you know, the student athlete, but really athlete student, you know, the whole class scenario and everything that goes along with it. Um, that's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. Um, and when you're going to school year round, like like I was at Arkansas State, you know, I'm there sun up to sun down. And eventually what happens is uh, you get burnt out and, you know, we're making a, making the universities all this money, building a foundation there. And then come summertime, you're hungry because you can't work. So it's a little different now because they just changed the, the rules and the, and the laws and things like that. And they're trying to figure that out. So kudos to the to, to, to the legislative arm of this thing to, to kind of push the NCAA in the right direction. But, um, you know, they were making a tons of money off of us and, and, and we were hurting. So I decided, you know what, I can do bad by myself. So I decided to go home. I went back to uh, North Little Rock, Arkansas. And, you know, when things leveled out, um, you know, I had some family issues and whatnot, but everything turned out better uh, and got, got for the best. And I uh, had a little family powwow and I decided to chase scouts from uh, Little Rock to L.A. and from L.A. back to Mobile, Alabama. Uh, just everywhere they were going to watch film, I was showing up, uh, living in the car, you know, that whole deal. So my story is a little bit different than a lot of guys. Okay. But there again, you got some guys that have gone through some things. So and I'm one of them. And I, you know really made it to the made it to the nfl from the trunk of my car so um then, it, wow. it's, there, it's there for you to make it you can make it i mean it's you got to be cut from a certain kind of cloth but you can make it now that sound like a book a movie or something it's made coming it to the NFL from the, yeah, from the we <laughs> yeah we're gonna put something together at some point i mean i've been approached by uh, a number of movie producers um you know i had the opportunity to to really get close to um couple of the producers for uh, the greater uh, movie, the Brandon Burrowsworth movie a few years back out of Arkansas. Um, and they were like, hey, man, we need to go ahead and work on this movie. I'm like, well, I still got some stuff I'm doing, you know. So, I mean, eventually if I get everything situated and and, I, and I'm done running and gunning and doing what I'm doing, uh, I'll probably slow down enough to go ahead and do the books and, and the movie as well. So, Look, I would love to see your story. I watched the story. I guess it's probably been a year ago, maybe a young man in college had to, having to raise his young brother. Right. Essentially. Um, I forget it's his name at the moment. Forgive me. But I just know I'm glad I watched the story because I'm not usually a sports movie person. Of course. But it was a really great story. <laughs> nah, yeah. Once you start getting into people's background and really see what they went through um, as they, you know, mature through college and, and all those things, like I say, it's it's hard enough to, to have all of your time being spoken for, you don't really have a lot of time to yourself uh, as you're learning how to be an adult. But, you know, you come to the table and you got, you know, brothers and sisters that you may be raising uh, or even your own children. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, OK, I'm, 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 I'm it's baptism by fire. I'm in the fire. Let's go get it. Let's get it figured out and figure out how to make my adjustments to be the best ball player and student I can. And, and hopefully I get that opportunity. And, you know, that's the deal every year. There's a number of individuals that are draft eligible and only 256 are going to get that call. Uh, so the chances are slim, but it's possible. All righty. So now I want to fast forward and talk okay. about, I mean, 
foundation you have. And um, I'm looking at the page on change.org and it says Houston Texans, a change is needed. And as you mentioned, football is king between Alabama with the college football and Texas. It's like, yeah, football, <laughs> is, football is it. Like, right, right, right. <laughs> It's football, family football. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> In the, it is. So let's talk about this organization or foundation right there and what you hope to achieve, accomplish, or what are you doing right now through the foundation? And, you know, there's some signatures needed, some funding needed, and things of that nature. So give us the whole rundown. Okay. Well, I'm the president of the Huddle Up Foundation of Houston which is okay. the nonprofit leg of the NFL PA Houston chapter in which I'm the VP. Okay. Um, so basically what we're doing with, uh, the, with the Huddle Up Foundation is all of these athletes that are here, you know, have different initiatives that they, they want to get going and they might not know how to. Uh, they may not have the resources or the relationships to do those things. So, you know, from all my philanthropic work, you know, throughout the city of Houston and everywhere that I've been, um, I, I bring those to the table and what we do is we figure out the best way uh, schematically to, to help them put those things together so they can make, make more of a, a social impact. And, mm -hmm. and with that, um, you know, we get a chance to serve the communities that we live in, that we're from uh, and just, uh, you know, all over the place, you know, because there's a lot of underserved uh, communities out there that need help. And unfortunately, you know, it, it, people look at them as, you know, OK, they're opportunity zones. We're going to put buildings here. We're going to do stuff here. Uh, but it's more or less a tax write off for them. Uh, but for us, it's where we're from. So we try to be entrenched in those areas so we can give back, we can mentor, we can do all these different things. But outside of that, I'm the head of sports for the Athlon family office, uh, mm -hmm. in which that gives me access to a lot of generational wealth and people wow. that come from generational wealth. So I try to make sure that I'm a bridge between those areas and I try to bridge that gap and, and just bring them into the, the sports space uh, so these athletes can have access to that and they can begin uh, begin begin building generational wealth, wealth or even looking at leaving generational wealth because ultimately for us, you know, as we came up, it was about working for somebody. It was never about ownership and, and that this shift is happening right now. Uh, and for me to be a part of that and be a head, be, you know, you know, in, in front forefront of that, that that's the most gratifying thing for myself. But that's what we do with the Huddle Up. Uh, that's what we're doing with the PA out here in Houston. We have one of the biggest chapters in, in the U.S., I think we have, you know, close to over a thousand members because a lot of a lot of people come back to Houston uh, when they're done playing or they might have just lived here, you know, for those tax benefits and so on and so forth. So uh, that's that's mo for the most part. That's what we do. We just we're in the community. We're, we're active in, and, and we're in the community. So let's talk about the impact that um, your engagement has on the young people's lives. Um, again, not everyone comes from the same background household dynamics and or even okay let's let me back up a little bit. let's talk about this even yeah. if there is a two-parent dynamic right. there's still always something oh that yeah the child yeah. needs or is missing out on like so we can't just pres presume that just because a mom and dad is in the house oh it's just the perfect you know well old Right, right, right. Nah, nah, there's still some dysfunction there. Not at all. <laughs> there could be some dysfunction there. <laughs> there tons of dysfunction. <laughs> so let's talk about the impact that your engagement has on the different young people that you encounter. Um, I, I just try to be, uh, you know, some, a voice that they can, they can listen to. I just try to be an ear that they can, you know, voice their opinions to. You know, because it's like it's the dynamic of family, the dynamic of relationships, the dynamic of just uh, communication is just that if you're with somebody around somebody every day, all day, you're going to listen to somebody else before you you know, take heed to what somebody has probably already told you a million times. <laughs> and it's going to be the gospel. Yeah, they just told me and I got it. Yeah, it's that deal. So the youngsters are just like that. You know, I try to be uh, just just there for them when I can. And just listen to them, you know, because a lot of them, that's all they need is somebody to just listen to them and be there for them. Um, you know, parents might be working. Parents might be busy. Uh, you even said, you know, parents might not be together, you know, and that's in itself is, is stress. And, and with, you know, the way these youngsters are maturing and, and, and being forced into adulthood so quick, 
um, that's a lot of pressure. You know, that's a lot of them having to internalize different things and, 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 and that's not really good for them. Uh, you know, and I pray for them every day because they are a lot more advanced and there's a lot more that they see on a daily basis than, than when I came up. So, you know, that's what I just try to be a buffer uh, and just try to give them the knowledge that I have from the life that I've lived uh, and teach them, you know, from 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 my wrongs and my rights and and just use that as a lesson plan, you know, to be be what they need. And so let's talk about the aspect of taking what they learn on the field and applying it to real life. Like I've seen a playbook and it's a bunch of X's and O's. And right, 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 right. So, Absolutely. you know, and I'm sh- I know there's strategy discussed and mm-hmm. okay, if you're in this position, you make this move, this will happen, blah, blah, yada, yada. So mm-hmm. kind of tie into how you help them to take what they learn on the field and apply it to real life and how to strategize decision making, um, things right. of that nature, dealing with peer pressure and right. whatever else may come up in their life. <laughs> well, it, it's I think it's a lot deeper than just the playbook and the X's and the O's. I mean, I think that's a byproduct of you learning how to deal with people, if you learning how to be on the team, learning how to be accountable. Um, and those are the things that happens in life. I mean, for me, you know, for me to be a father, husband, um, I'm a provider. And if the food isn't here in my backyard. I have to go out and hunt to bring that back. Mm -hmm. And there's a level of responsibility to everything that I have to do because I have a lot of people looking at me like, okay, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? So it's that, that teaches you that, that teaches you how to be strong enough to be dependent on. And also uh, the teamwork deal, you know, where, okay, if I'm weak in this area, I need you to be strong here. So, you know, we're working together, you know, it's, it's, it's easier. It's easier to move a couch with two people than with one person, you know, so you have to you have to just look at things like that. And just it, I think football teaches you a, a common sense approach. Okay. Um, you know, it's 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 people tend to do so much. But if you just slow it down and simplify things, you can get it done the same way. And you always learn that there's more than one way home. Uh, it's pretty safe to say you may have a couple more ways that you can get home. So you just have to. You know, I had to put it in, in a vernacular that everybody understands. And and that's what they learn from from sports. You know, that's what I learned. That's what the people before me learned, um, you know, sports and in and, and general kind of work that way. They, they they teach you about life without you even knowing that they're teaching you. Wow. You know, that's, so that's kind of what the deal is. I um, had a conversation with someone who uh, plays chess and they actually right. teach chess and right. They are really good and they do tournaments and things like that. And so we had a conversation on my radio show about chess in real life. And mm-hmm. they brought the board, set it up, explained <laughs> the pieces, and explained right. how the different movements on the chess board can apply to real life. And right. it was so interesting and engaging. I wish we had more time with it at the time. Is there something similar already put together, or can I just throw this out there and get left? To organize, put something like that together when it comes to football, because they're different players. Each player has a role and responsibility. And without one, as you mentioned, without one, something's going to go wrong or not. The play may not go as smoothly. If this person's out of place, you know, you can you can you can try to predict, you know, from your end. Okay, this is how we're going to line up. This is the play we're going to do. But you can never predict what the other side is going to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. To that point, you know, it's, it's just like I say, there are various programs out there. I mean, I, I started my own developmental football league back in 2012 okay. uh, where, where we were teaching and we are teaching, you know, financial literacy, business, uh, communication, all the different things that football teaches you. We wanted to complement that with everyday scenarios that would help our athletes and their families, you know, navigate not being picked up by a team to go to the league. Uh, the different things that you can do to make sure that, you know, you're, you're financially stable enough to to not miss that type of money um, and just being responsible. Um, you know, the whole the whole chess situation. I mean, if you really sit down and you break it down, if you look at everything in this world that uh, goes on and different things like that, if you really sit down and you really break it down, everything really teaches you about life, um, you know. It's just like, the, you know, the, how everything is set up in your house, the wiring, the foundation, the plumbing, all those different things. If you really slow down, you realize you can't do anything without a good, a solid foundation, period. Mm-hmm. 
And then from there you start, you know, setting your frame up and then you, then you, you know, you box in your frame and then you're going to use your insulation and all those things. So it, there's a steps to building that house. And it's the same thing with, you know, in real life and everything that you do, there are steps you have to take in order to be the best you possible. Um, and, and there are no shortcuts <laughs> that I think that's what football really teaches you. Like you have to go out there and actually do the work, not only on the field, but off the field. And that's the same thing in life. You got to do the work. There's no shortcuts, no mag magic potions, no lotions, no ointments. Um, you really have to you really have to get down and dirty and do what you need to do in order to grow. Um, you got to be uncomfortable. And it's just like going to the gym. If you're in there taking selfies, you're not working. You're in the way. And, and there's some people that need that machine that you you holding up. You know what I'm saying? So it's that's life. And it, it, if you're not really taking it serious, life will life will make you take it serious. So it, that's what it is. Most definitely. Oh my right. goodness. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, in all of your years of working with young people, um, have you had any that are now say teenagers or adults? that come back to you and say, you know what? I appreciate X, Y, Z, whatever you taught them. They they right. now see it and they appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot that come back. Um, you know, of course, in the social media age, you know, everybody can keep up with everybody if they decide to. And, and a lot of the athletes that I work with in, in the past when they were, you know, really babies, you know, a lot of these guys are in college now. And a lot of these athletes that I dealt with with my developmental football league, their parents now, a lot of guys are married. A lot of guys have businesses. Um, you know, I, feel, I still have a few that are in movies, you know, in commercials doing those things, playing football players. Um, so, you know, it, it really it really uh, does something for me um, that I was able to rub off on them, you know, in such a way to where they ha have been conducting their lives. And a lot of them come back and they thank me. And it's, it's really humbling um, because I do so much to the point to where when I really slow down and just look at my body of work, you know, I'm like, wow, OK, but I know that that's my purpose. And, and and they had to see me struggle through certain things. They had to see me put in the work. They had to see me being the leader that I know I was able to be in order for them to to have the movement that they wanted. And, and, I, and I think that that's a situation of, you know, if I've never been through it before, how could I tell you how to get through it or how to get to it? And I'm a firm believer in that. Um, and, and they, uh, you know, they come back. And it's, it's a beautiful thing just to watch a lot of these uh, people that I've dealt with in the past flourishing. So, I, I mean, I feel very blessed to be in that position. Well, I bet that feels like a proud papa moment. Like, <laughs> these are my babies. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at them right, now. Right, right. In Absolutely. life. <laughs> That's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think all of us, you mentioned about purpose. I think all of us should want to tap into that aspect of who we are as far as leaving a legacy that should be every a part of everybody's purpose leaving right. a legacy um i'm all about that like when i'm planning our cultural events here in our city um for right. the radio station i'm like what legacy do i want to leave what message do i want to reign supreme what mm -hmm. do i want people to walk away from what experience rather or message do i want people to walk away from this event and i have to make sure that it's not about me. It's about yeah. the people. It's about there the messaging. Because <laughs> um, I want to leave a legacy. When I'm no longer able to do whatever I'm doing, I want people to have a good feeling about what I tried to impart on them or in them. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and especially young people. I have a soft spot for teenagers. I don't know why sometimes because teenagers are... <laughs> Teenagers yeah, they are rough, man. They, they are rough. Ooh, ooh they rough. Yep. <laughs> but I know what I was like as a teen and what I mm -hmm. needed. And so I try to be that for so them. I get that. I get that. So, oh, my goodness. So I want to ask some kind of fun questions, I guess you're saying. Um, okay. When you're watching TV, do you have any favorite football-related movies or shows that you like? Okay. It's not too far off the mark, but you know right. it's, it's fun. <laughs> um, I think for me, uh, yes, football shows. Eh, I mean, I like Ballers because they gave okay. a little bit more of a, a inside look 
although it was really glorified in a lot of instances, an inside look of professional sports and, you know, sports management, athlete management, which is really cool because I've been through that before. So I've, I've been able to really, you know, kind of navigate that terrain. Um, as far as uh, like a lot of just football, I've never been really just a fan of a lot of football. I've, I've always done so many other things that I've always had the opportunity to, to really kind of get away from the game and that not be the end all for me uh, because that's how I started out. It never really was. I, I got to watch the game. I got to do this. I got to do that. And it's football related or I'm walking around the house with a football in my hand. Uh, you know, just things like that is, is for me was a little different. Um, but definitely, you know, those shows that kind of give you insight uh, on what's going on and how things are going. Uh, that's kind of what that baller situation was uh, with the show with The Rock and, and what he was going through, learning how to deal with not playing anymore, the, the the quality of life and the injuries and all those things. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah. And that was one show I actually watched. I can't believe, again, I watched that too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all right. It was all right. Was uh, all what right. about any given Sunday. Now that was definitely. Yeah, um, that, was, <laughs> yeah that was, that was a little different. Um, it was cool, you know, because I knew a lot of the, the guys that was, were actually in the movie, like the, 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 the extras and cause I followed a lot of guys careers. So to see them acting and, and, you know, and, and portraying football players, I thought that was pretty cool uh, because that's something that I had wanted to do at a point in time where, you know, I can get in front of the camera and, and then I got that out of my system, you know, by uh, uh, being over uh, some of the stunts in the the greater Brandon Burlesworth movie, uh, like I talked about earlier. So they they brought me in to, to help them, you know, choreograph the, the plays and, and the stunts and those types of things. So that was really cool. And I got a chance to be, uh, you know, one of the extras. You know, I had like maybe 20 or 30 of my developmental players in the movie, too. So, you know, giving those guys that type of situation where they were really learning. Uh, you know, something other than just the game itself and learning how to be on, on camera and doing all those different things was was really cool. Okay. For me. It was really cool for me. Have you had a chance to meet any legends of the game? And do you have like a wish list of people you would like to meet? <laughs> uh yeah, I run into a lot of legends all the time, you know, from different events that we have, Super Bowl things, um, Hall of Famers. You know, I get a chance to be around a lot of those guys a lot through some some of the business entities that I have going on that are dealing with uh, uh, athletes in general. So that's really cool, you know, to be around guys that you've seen and you watched them uh, when you did watch the game college wise and, and those types of things. Um, uh, man, I, I think a few of the guys that have passed away and it comes down to to meeting people uh, for me. Uh, I would like to sit down with them and just kind of talk to them a little bit, you know, about the different things that they've gone through, kind of like uh, Walter Payton. You know, I got a chance to meet him very briefly uh, when I was in uh, uh, junior high uh, going to high school, uh, you know, before you pass. So that, you know, to be around those types of individuals at that young of an age was really, you know, influential for me. And and I think, you know, to be able to have that kind of camaraderie with them and that, that rapport and that relationship, to be able to sit down with them and just really pick their brain would be pretty cool for me. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> so also kind of talking about legends, but looking at the overall aspect of, at some point you will be considered a leader, you know, whether you choose to be or you, it just society right. will appoint you as a leader, you know? And right. so exactly. Exactly. do you try to instill into the young people or just the, the individuals that you encounter through your programs, that it may not be something you asked for, but it's something that we put up on you. And right. so do you try to teach them how to conduct themselves now to build their reputation um, and their namesake now. So they, you know, when they get to that point, you know, you don't see right. this long Google list of like, ooh, you did that. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I try to try to teach them that it's easier to keep up than it is to catch up, you know. Okay. Um, so you got to be on top of that. You know, you got to be on top of the things you do every day. You got to be intentional, um, you know, especially with my with my children. Like, hey, these are the things that you say you want to do. So you have to take those steps uh, and you got to be accountable for, you know, going to practice. You got to be accountable mm -hmm. for knocking your schoolwork out. 
You got to be accountable for thinking about things in a, in a, at the end game. You got to start with the end in mind in anything in life. Mm-hmm. And uh, from there, you, you're able to, to kind of facilitate the changes that are needed to be made. Um, but all too often, people kind of just wake up and go with the day. And that's that's the equivalent of, of, of having a sailboat and letting the wind blow you all over the place. You don't know where you're going. Um, so you have to you have to figure that out. And a lot of times, I think with with the youngsters today, um, they, they get mixed up, you know, and it's kind of like myself. I, I didn't really know. But for me, I knew because I, I, I was always different, you know, and it was cool for me. I was like, I'm good. Um, but I think in this day and age, you know, with, with, with the youngsters trying to find themselves, you know, giving them something to look at as an example is, is really key. But at the same time, talking to them in such a way to where they really start to find their purpose and understand that, you know, there's no pressure for them to be like somebody else. It's like like my son, uh, my oldest son. He's you know 100 times better than I was at sports of all sports. Right. And and, you know, sometimes I think that he feels that pressure. Of, of accomplishing everything that I've accomplished on the football field. And I tell him and I try to bring him to the square as much as I can and say, man, this, listen, that what I did is is totally different from what you're doing. You, you got to be your own man. You got to do your own thing. And if, if sports isn't for you, you know, hey, I, I'm not putting any pressure on you because I did have that pressure put on me. Um, so I'm not going to do it with you. You know, if somebody else is pressuring you, you know, if it's not me and it's not somebody who's done what I've done on that field, you shouldn't. You can take that with a grain of salt, you know. So don't, don't, don't put that pressure on yourself. But just understand that, you know, if this isn't for you, there's something else that is, and you, it is up to you to figure that out. You know, what you're passionate about, what you like to do, uh, and then you know, turn that into a, a living. You know, because if you're having fun at anything, you're not working. So that's that's what this thing is about. You got to find your purpose, and, and then you got to pursue that with passion, so you can you can make that uh that that potential turn into some, you know, something beautiful. That is absolutely awesome. Um, as you were talking about um, not pressuring your son and not, and right. trying to encourage him not to be you, it reminded right. me of an article I read about Denzel Washington's son. Exactly. Um, he was like, he wants to, he wants to build his career off of his own merits, not his dad's absolutely. name. Right, of course. So he's doing everything he can to again build his career on his um right. on skills, you know, and so right. I think as parents, I'm a parent, and um we should all be teaching or instilling in our children, don't try to be like me, um be you and do what right. you can do the best that you can do it, you know. So exactly, absolutely. That's the truth. It's and I think we we lose sight of that a lot of times and there are no real guide books to parenting. There are no real guide books to marriage. There are no real guide books to just life in general. So you have to learn and then you have to, you know, find you somebody that can mentor you, you know, from, from their mistakes and their triumphs. Because if somebody has all triumphs, I think they lie. You know, if you, you got some you got you got some failures in there. Uh and you and that's supposed to be the situation. It's like uh, a meal, you know, a gumbo or whatever, you know, everything that you've gone through in life is that flavor. And if you've never gone through anything, your your your, your life is gonna be pretty bland. And what you're feeding me doesn't take I don't I don't I don't have a taste for that. So I need to know you had some life and things going on, you know. That's right. <laughs> All right. I just want to say thank you, you know, for Absolutely. giving me your time and I really enjoyed this conversation. I know I could ask a million and one probably unrelated questions. All right. and, yeah, no, we had we had to do a, we had to do a, a volume two later on and, and and get into the get into all the other stuff. So yes, because um, you got to get this book and movie and all this stuff going on or something going on. Oh, everything, everything, and then you you you're still out there in Jonesboro, right? Yes. Yeah. Still- so I, I definitely uh, am going to be more active in coming back. Uh, you know, we we had a few things going on when they when they built the uh, the additions to the stadium and those types of things. So there's some, some donations for that. You know, got me a little locker and all that stuff like this. So I got to get back and, and yeah. check everything out because it's grown. I know I, and I've been there a couple of times, but I, I haven't been back as much as I should. though. So we got to start working on that. So do you know a player or ex player, ex student named Charleston Gurley? Mm, that name is familiar. He's only. He's thirty something. <laughs> yeah, he came. Yeah, he came after me, but I, that name is familiar. 
you all have, I don't want to say similar stories, but when it came to him trying to get onto the A state team, it mm. wasn't just him for him. And so I would love to hear more stories like you all. Absolutely. And hear you all, have you all come back and talk to the guys? Because some of them think, oh, I can play, so I'm just going to walk off. No, it doesn't always happen like that. No, it's, <laughs> it's a little different. It's, it's, it's business, you know, and, and, and once you get there, uh, like I say, it teaches you how to be disciplined. It teaches you about consistency and it teaches you about that responsibility that you have. I mean, getting up, working at four or five in the morning, then going to class and then coming back and then getting something to eat, then going to training table, then going to uh, study hall after that. It's a lot. It's a lot. But um, it, it teaches you a lot. So a lot of these guys are, you know, they don't really know what it's like in order to what to be able to get there or what what's needed. Um, so definitely, yeah, we can definitely set some things up like that and come back and talk to groups and all those things. So you got my information, just, 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 you know, reach out to me when something going is, is going on. And if my schedule permits, I'll definitely be back that way. All right. So I'm, I'm going to put your email on the screen here because we want people to reach out to you, want to get involved with your foundation, um, to get involved with anything else you have going on in Houston. Um, just make a donation of any kind, you know, help some yeah. young people out, you know. Um, let's start pouring back into our babies, our children at the young age, at a young age. And right. tell them they have a village of people who love and care about them and want to see them succeed in every aspect of their life. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. you better believe it. We're out here. I mean, it's <laughs> it gets tough at times and you don't think anybody cares, but we do. We do. We, we, you know, we're, we're, we're few and far between, but ultimately we're making a comeback. You know, we'll be popular again pretty soon. So y'all just hang in there. All right. And so do you keep in touch? Um, I know life happens, but do you keep in touch with any of your former fo former teammates from the different teams that you play? Oh, with? yeah. No, like I say, I have teammates all over the world. So with social media, it makes it a lot easier to keep up with guys. You know, and we kind of go back and forth and you know, bring up old stuff and that locker room deal and just that whole mentality and, and, and laugh about things that we went through that weren't really funny at that time. But now that we're older, we're like, you know what? That was funny. You know, when we were running and doing all these different things and, you know, stuff like that. So I, I keep up with a, a, a lot of players, uh, a lot of my former teammates and they'll be teammates for life, you know? And so that's, that's really the coolest thing about it. And, and sports really does that for you. It's that camaraderie, you know, even though we may not be playing, uh, are in the same areas, you know, we always find a way to link back up. And I, and I really enjoy that. Okay. I have one more question. I know I, I'm the queen of questions. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So thinking about, you know, some of the things that you endure from high school, college to football, I mean, right. high school, college to professional football, right. um, there's a mental aspect that oftentimes is not, get discussed. So do you all, in the midst of, okay, recounting the good times, you all have very serious conversations with men. Like, okay, you know, there's some things I'm dealing with. I need to talk about something. Like, right. you know, do you all allow that space for each other to just be open and vulnerable as well? Yeah, yeah. Now, now more than anything, I think uh, athletes and, you know, the older guys are really understanding and really looking at mortality because, uh, you know, I've had a few uh, teammates that are my age and they're not here anymore. So it really puts things in perspective, you know, as far as I'm running out of time. Like every time you wake up, every time you're breathing and every day, you know, you, you're you running out of time. So you have to start acting according to, you know, what's going on in your life and how you're doing things because you never know when you're not going to be here anymore. So. Um, you have to be intentional. And and for a lot of the players, as they start to see guys pass away, um, that makes us, you know, start to reach out and check on you and check on your teammates, you know, and just say, hey, man, are you doing OK? Because, you know, mental health is is huge, you know, and there's so many different pressures that go along with being a being a father, husband, a provider. Uh, if you're not mentally strong enough, um, you know, it could it could it could it could really do you in. I mean, and that's for anybody. Uh, but. I think with what I've learned, um, you know, I learned my limitations uh, through playing sports. I've learned, you know, my level of patience uh, and you have to be patient, you know, when dealing with other people, because nine times out of 10, you have a hard enough time dealing with yourself, let alone somebody else. 
Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, talking to your, your teammates, you find out really quickly, like everybody's going through something and everybody's pretty much going through the same thing. Uh, so it's just trying to figure out how to navigate this world and navigate what goes on in it. Um, and, and giving guys the space, you know, they might not talk to them every day, but when somebody calls you, you know, if somebody calls you out the blue and say, Hey man, I was just checking on you. just want to holler at you. Um, we're trying to figure out what's going on. Like, Hey man, I'm here. Let me slow down and let me talk to you. And then you start to kind of get to the nuts and bolts of what's going on. And you try to offer your advice um, and just say, Hey man, you know, it's life, you know, things, things happen. Um, just, just try to stay as positive as possible, but understand that, you know, everybody's going through it and, and, you know, whether, whatever, whatever the, the, the situation is, you know, it's, it's nothing new under the sun. So just keep your head high and do what you got to do. And if you really, really are in a bad place mentally, you got to try to figure out how to get that help. And there's a tons of things that, you know, can, can help, help athletes out and help the, you know, their families out. So, uh, and, you know, mental health is non-negotiable. You know, it is, it's like, once that's gone, you're gone. So you, you gotta, you gotta be a tyrant about your mental health. And, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm learning. And, and that's what it has to be. All right. Are you involved in any type of organizations, um, charitable or non-charitable, that address those issues um, of former football players or former sports players? I just feel like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm I'm involved in a lot of different things. Like I say, the PA, uh, we, we 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 put on different things for the athletes um, in regards to mental health. There's a lot of you know helplines. For us, you know, former players and then even, you know, the younger, younger generation, there's some programs that I've had the opportunity to partner with over the years um, that, you know, we we utilize those services for different things. And, and it's all about teaching them how to be intentional with everything that they do and definitely them being intentional when it comes down to, you know, seeking help and not just sitting there festering in it. Um, you know, and like I say, every all of the situations are different, especially with COVID and you know, sports being taken away, you know, especially the youngsters uh, and being in the house uh, on lockdown. I mean, that's enough to test anybody, but you have to kind of put it in perspective. You know, say it's better than being in a, you know, a, 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 a six by 12 uh, jail cell or whatever it is, nine by 12 or whatever the situation is. You, you, you got some freedom. So you're doing a lot better than most. So I think when people start to slow it down, put it in perspective and use common sense, uh, life is okay. You're going to be all right. It's just, yeah. You gotta you gotta make your way through it and be strong and, and and be intentional about everything you do and utilize your time wisely. All righty. Well, thank you so much. I want to remind everyone: go to change.org and look up Houston Texans. A change is needed, and get involved. Uh, find any way you can get involved with this foundation, um, whether it's providing networks, connections, and connections donations, whatever. <laughs> no, look, I'm going to keep throwing it. Shame, unshameless plug. <laughs> um, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I'm all about, you know, getting people the help they need because the more it's not just about the money, but the more money you have, the more services you can provide or you can expand your services in a different way. So, sure thing. Absolutely. Um, and also, whatever students are involved in your programs, it takes the, re- it, it gives their family some relief, you know, depending mm-hmm. on what it all entails. So again, right, absolutely. I'm not a sports person. So I'm not going to speak over myself. <laughs> so I don't know what all is in- involved, but um, I appreciate each and every person that puts their life and body on the line um, for everyone else's entertainment. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you Appreciate for that alone. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Anyway, gotcha. I just want to thank you again uh, for giving me your time um, for this wonderful conversation. Um, definitely shout out to your family who have been there with you through all of this um, and can't wait to see your sons doing whatever they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, they'll be doing something. That's for sure. They, they can be anything they want in the world, but lazy, and they can't. They can't do that. So there you go. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. I'll put um, your email address on the bottom of the screen. Cool, so please you. reach out to Mr. Garrick. Any questions, comments? You know, any find out how you can help. But on, just ask. Start with that question: How can I help? And there then let them, let them tell you 
how to get in touch with them. And if you would like to get in touch with me for any inquiries, um, you can reach me on any of my social media platforms um, or podcast platforms. I'll be happy to answer any questions. So I want to thank you all for listening, for watching, and for supporting the Q-Spot podcast in any shape, form, or fashion you have. Um, so also I want to remind everyone to be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions. And as always, thanks for your kisses, y'all. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Q-Spot podcast video series. Don't forget to join the Q-Crew so you don't miss a beat. Follow, like, and share on all of my social media platforms as well as the major podcast platforms. Lastly, be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions.